All right, guys, today we got a really fun one. We're going to give you the top five most expensive car lines that we work on, ranked by average repair order. Let's get into it. So before we get into it, let me tell you the data that we use, how we compile the data, how we crunch the numbers to come up with this list. So the first thing we did was we went into our system and we just printed out the reports that would show for the last two years how many vehicles in each car line that we worked on. And then we took, if there were car lines, so I'm gonna give you an example, there are car lines that kind of went close together like Volkswagen, Audi. We then looked at those car lines and said, is the average repair order really close? And if it was, then we compiled those into one you know, car line, right? So instead of having a Volkswagen and an Audi, we've got Volkswagen, Audi. Now, if the average repair order was not close, then we, we separated those out. And that did happen one time, and we'll show you that actually will show up in this list. So then we took the amount of dollars that were spent on those vehicles over the course of those two years, and we divided out how many vehicles we worked on into that number, which gives us our average repair order. So this is not like an exhaustive research project. This isn't a thesis. This isn't, you know, some kind of statistician going out here and putting all these numbers together to give you like the, the in-depth, you know, down to the nitty gritty. This is just a overall quick down and dirty. Here's the numbers that people spent over the course of two years and the amount of cars that we did. Boom, do, the, do that quick number to give you guys an idea of what these cars cost to, to work on. And there's lots of different reasons why some of these cars are expensive as they are. It doesn't mean that they're not good cars that are worth purchasing. They, it just means that they do have some issues that you know cost makes the cost go up. Uh, also, mileage can play a big part into this. How many miles are on these vehicles? How What's the age of these vehicles? We didn't break all that down. Maybe in a future video, that would take a lot of time to get that all broken down into, you know, the average, average year, the average mileage, all that kind of stuff. So we can certainly look into doing that. If you're interested, leave a comment down below. Let us know you want us to, and we'll see if we can't put it together. So at the end, I'm gonna give you my reaction to the list and also give you a couple of notables that didn't make the list, but they were really close. They're gonna surprise you. All right, let's get into the list. Number five. So we happen to have, we don't have every one of these vehicles here with some problem that we could show you right now, but we do have a few. So we're gonna show them to you as we do. This is Audi, obviously. So number five is Audi Volkswagen. We are gonna give you the numbers. The numbers are the average repair order on those vehicles over the last two years in our shops, $1,165.35. And we worked on 364 of these vehicles. So a pretty good sample size on these. Let me go ahead and show you what's wrong with this thing and, and I'll kind of tell you why, it's so, why these vehicles are so expensive to work on. Let me start it up. So, and, and some of this is the average repair order on a lot of the European vehicles. They're bumped up a little bit because oil services are even expensive. I mean, some of the oil services, depending on the car line, can be anywhere from 180 to $300 for an oil service. So that obviously bumps that average repair order up. But then you get into repairs like this one needs. So this one has a bad crankcase uh, ventilation valve in it. So we gave this about 30 seconds and you can hear incredibly loud whistle right so let me go ahead and shut this thing off because that gets annoying real fast so to repair this on this vehicle is the crankcase ventilation valve which is located underneath the supercharger so you've got to take the whole supercharger then taking everything off of this vehicle and it's located down below that that's that's not inexpensive some vehicles, it's on the valve covers, which you can get them off pretty easily. Some of them are on the back where you can get them easily, but on this one, it's buried. So again, adds to cost. And it's a very common problem on these vehicles. The other thing on Volkswagen Audi that causes the, the average repair order to be high is oil leaks. You're gonna see that that's a common theme along, among you know your European vehicles. They're pretty common to have oil leaks and the oil leaks, unfortunately, are, are pretty expensive. Now, I will tell you, if you change the oil regularly, if you make sure that your crankcase vent system is functioning properly, so if you start hearing something like that, you need to get that in immediately, right? If you have an oil leak, even a small one, don't put it off. If you put it off, it's gonna create more issues and have more oil leaks. So these are not vehicles that if you have a little bit of a seeping oil problem that you can go, oh, well, you know, I can fix that later. 
just go ahead and fix it. It will actually, in the long run, it'll cause you to have less expense in, in the vehicle. All right, real quick, do me a favor. Hit that thumbs up if you're liking this video. Hit that subscribe button so you know we can continue to put out this, this content. Hit that bell notification so you know every time we drop a new video. And leave us a comment down below. Let us know what you think number one's gonna be. Let's get back to the video. Number four. So this is gonna be Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, Ram. All of them are in one. They were all really, really close together. And the biggest thing, so look, let me give the numbers first. So the numbers are, uh, the average repair order on these are $1,172.80. So, you know, what is that, seven bucks more than the, than the Audi Volkswagen. And we did 404 of these. Now, what, what's the cost on these cars? Why are these so high? I mean, this is a, a Chrysler product. You know, why are these as expensive as, you know, a Volkswagen Audi? Well, the biggest thing on these are the 3.6 liters have got camshaft issues. They've got oil stand or oil filter housing gaskets, oil filter housings, right? Uh, lots, of, lots of issues with, unfortunately, internal issues on some of their engines. Some of their Hemis have got lifter issues. We've done, you know, there, there's some engine replacements in here on these things. So the good thing is on these vehicles, normally, like let's say it needs an engine to be replaced and a, you know, a truck or something, you know, that maybe is eight, nine, 10 years old, or even a Jeep, something like this, it's usually worth putting the engine in. Now that's going to raise the average repair order because now an engine can be extremely expensive. So, you know, this just on these, it's generally your engine issues, internal engine issues on these vehicles. It's not really much else. Uh, other than that, that's what causes the repair order to be high. Oil services and stuff on these are, you know, they're not inexpensive. No oil service is inexpensive today, really, because if you're using the proper oil and filter, you're going to pay a little bit for it. But they're not, you're not like $300 or $200 or something like that. Number three, which I think a lot of you probably would have thought would be number one, but it's number three, Mercedes. So this particular, we have a couple of them sitting here right now with some, some pretty higher cost problems. One is air suspension. So this has had some air suspension issues with it. So not super inexpensive to fix. That adds to the cost on these things. Very common. Now, it's very common on vehicles that have some years on them. We're not seeing these issues with you know newer ones. We're seeing them when, they, when they've got 10, 12, 15 years on them. But that just tells you that the vehicles are worth keeping because they're that, they're that many years old, right? So that plays a part into these numbers is how old are these vehicles that we're working on? And some of them can be, you know, back in the early 2000s, mid 2000s. So, I mean, we're talking about this is 2024 right now. It'd be 20 years old and we're still, you know, there's still a viable vehicle to be, be fixed. So let's look at this guy. Now this one obviously is newer. So this one is a 16. All right, so still eight years old. The problem that we had with the Audi, same problem here, same whistle. We're not gonna start up and let you hear it. It's the same exact problem. Crankcase bent valve on this one also located on the back of the intake manifold. Very difficult to replace, adds to the cost of it, and is again not an inexpensive repair. The other thing, again, on Mercedes is just like every other European vehicle, oil leaks, and the same you know logic applies to these that applies to any other European vehicle. And even getting into the domestics today is if you've got a small oil leak, go ahead and get it fixed. Don't put it off. It's not like the days where you can say, oh, I got a little tiny valve cover leaking or something like that, and I can just put it off. It does create other issues with the crankcase vent system and will cause other oil leaks to happen. So got an oil leak on one of these cars, need to fix it. All right, so the next two, we don't actually have a vehicle on a lot to go over anything with you. One of them is really surprising that we don't have one on this at this store. We probably do at the other store. But let's go. Number two is BMW. So BMW, the Average repair order is $1,386.86, and we have worked on 286 of them. So again, a very common vehicle for us, and the same exact you know, problems that we have in most of the European vehicles. And BMW actually, big time oil leaks, oil leaks, oil leaks. They're just, you know, they just are very common to have those. I think they're good vehicles, just like I think Mercedes is a good vehicle, but you gotta keep those oil leaks under control, and again, Oil services, that number is going to be a little elevated, just like Mercedes. Mercedes oil services are going to be you know, quite expensive. BMW oil services can get quite expensive if you're using the proper you know, products on it, filter and, and oil, doing the proper inspections and stuff. So the other thing on these cars that I haven't mentioned yet, tires. Tires can get expensive on these. You know, they tend to be you know, high-performance tires with 
most of the time a lot of low profiles and stuff so that can add into the cost of it too so again I'm not saying that's not a good vehicle i think bmw is a good vehicle i just think that it's, it's a higher maintenance vehicle just like mercedes you got to you got to be on top of that you just got to know it's just a higher end vehicle it's going to cost more to repair number one so this is one that we've got a, a substantially smaller sample size i think out in the world it's got a smaller sample size they're not the, the most you know mainstream manufacturer but that's jaguar land rover uh we have worked on 74 of those vehicles over the last two years the average repair order is just bumping up on sixteen hundred dollars it's fifteen ninety eight sixty nine all right so what's common with those vehicles well coolant leaks like crazy and they're not inexpensive to fix once you start getting into them you start doing all of them timing chains sprockets you've got again oil leaks on those vehicles they're just generally a more expensive vehicle to fix they from our experience they tend to not last as long and i think some of that is because the first owners of those vehicles do the, the you know the, the go by the book on the maintenance schedule and it tends to be pretty lenient on oil services and other maintenances and then all, unfortunately the second and third owner buy them and they're just they, they start getting into some problems if this is the vehicle you're looking at i'm not saying there some of them are pretty cool there's air suspension issues with those also this is basically if you take all of the other manufacturers of the, the european manufacturers and go well you know that's got timing chain issues and this one's got oil leak issues and this one's got crankcase issues and this one's got if you could kind of combine all those issues into one on, on Jaguar or Land Rover, unfortunately. And then on top of that, they're not super, super common. So the parts for these vehicles tend to be more expensive. All right, promise you a couple of notables and some quick reactions. So here they are. These are gonna surprise you. So, and we are going to have another video that's gonna be released soon on the least most expensive. And I think some of you might think that these two that I'm about to tell you would show up in that list and they don't. So the number we'll call it the number six most expensive is ford so any ford lincoln mercury vehicle uh, there's 418 of those that we worked on and the average repair order on those is uh one thousand fifty one dollars and sixty two cents so really close about you know a little over a hundred dollars less than the audi volkswagen so kind of close to it and i think that would surprise a lot of people the reason that those that that one is so high is because of EcoBoost problems. You got engine problems with the EcoBoost. You've got, I mean, gosh, you do have some electrical issues with those vehicles. You just, you know, it kind of runs the gambit on that. But the EcoBoost, I think, is their biggest their, their biggest problem. Water pumps on those are super expensive to replace. So, just something to, you know, have in the back of your head. You know, Ford, you're going to spend a little bit on those depending on what you get. Then number seven all right we're gonna it's gonna be gm again another surprise the 496 of those vehicles and it was 1036 dollars and 68 cents so what's that 14 15 bucks uh average repair order cheaper than the ford so really 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 close to the ford and you know those again transmission issues on a lot of the gm trucks you've got lifter issues in those engines but just like the Ford one, I'll be honest with you, that one is some newer vehicles. The GM ones, other than the transmission, transmission are pretty common, unfortunately, and that's expensive. But their lifter issues and stuff like that, it's got to be a few years old. It usually has some, some miles on it when that shows up. So it wouldn't be a bad choice if you're looking for, especially in the truck arena, if you're looking for something like that. I don't think it'd be a bad choice other than the transmissions on those things are, are kind of a problem. So... What are, you know, what are my thoughts on these things? The only ones that really surprised me were Ford and GM being that much. But then when I started thinking about it and starting calculating in the, you know, the major problems that they have on a few of their car lines, then, you know, or a few of their car models, then in engines and transmission, I could kind of see where it would add up. The other ones kind of knew where they were going to go on them. You know, the, the, the Europeans we knew were going to be in there. They're just more expensive to, to repair and maintain. So they're going to be there. And Chrysler, a lot of European, you know, um, thoughts and, and, you know, I guess engineering thoughts and things like that go into the Chrysler products and they have engine issues on top of that. So they just kind of creep up there into that, into that list. So anyway, I hope you guys like this list. I hope you like content like this. We're trying to do a little something different to see, you know, what you guys like. If you like it, definitely leave a comment down below. Let us know. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that thumbs up. Bell notification. You all know all the stuff to do. 
Appreciate you watching. We'll see you in the next one.